in the book without divulging too much, uh, Altamont. Well, Altamont, of course, is, you know, basically is the kind of archetypal rock and roll disaster. It was a gig, you know, that they should be teaching in uh, rock, rock and roll, school. rock school, <laughs> yeah. you know, how not to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? No security, insufficient toilets, no food, in a, a site that was um, positively anti-music, you know, it was in the high desert. It was a, a car racing track where they, you know, did destruction derbies for, for cars. Everything was wrong about it. Yeah. And it was also on December the 6th, which in that time in, in, the, in the Bay Area is freezing cold, bitterly cold. So it was all wrong. Yeah. Every, on every level, it was wrong. So it was a disaster. I think, I think the thing I find extremely interesting about, about it is um, you stayed behind to take, take the hit and try and clean it up. What, well, what, what brought you to that decision? Because that's a big decision to make when the band goes and you stay behind. I just felt, you know, that morally, if you like, I don't want to sound too high flown here, man, you know, but morally I thought we had a, a responsibility to try and clear up the mess, you know? And I didn't like the idea of every single person from the Rolling Stones just leaving, you know, like sticking with the shit and split. I felt somebody should be there and face up to it, you know? I mean, somebody got murdered there, man, or killed. You know what I mean? There's lots and lots of people got injured. It was a terrible situation. Sometimes you just can't leave things like that. You need to be around. And I th felt as a matter of honor that somebody from the Rolling Stones should be there. So it fell to me to do that, and I did it as best I could, you know? And uh, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. It was horrible, I hated it. But you know, in life, it's not all, you know, sunshine and roses. It's not all sitting on Bondi Beach looking at pretty girls, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes there's some shit to be dealt with. And it's the old adage, isn't it? You know, when the, tough get, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah, you, you know, deal with your shit. I think there's some, uh, you know, lessons to be learned from uh, this, and it's one of the reasons I wrote the book. You know, it's for people that want to go in the music business or are in, are in the music business, young people today, man. They should be aware of what the, 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 you know, the potential problems are, and you know, if you're going to be a tour manager, yeah, you deal with all these wonderful, uh, you know, great events that are fabulous. Yeah. But also, once in a while, you have to deal with the shit. Yeah. And you need to bring the same kind of energy, hopefully good energy, to dealing with the shit as you do with, you know, dealing with the sugar. Taking care of the fallout as much as you could yeah. after that happened. Yeah. Uh, has, has there ever been a monologue or an exchange of ideas or, or, or any sort of conversation between yourself and, and the Stones, respectively, oh, as no. to what had happened? No. That's, there's never been a word no, spoken? No, the Rolling Stones' way of dealing with the Altamont has always been to completely forget all about it. Just dismiss it, you know what I mean, from their kind of mind. I mean, people don't like to remember their, their disasters. But, I mean, conversely, one should realise it wasn't the Rolling... It's always labelled the Rolling Stones free concert at yeah. Altamont. Yeah. Conveniently forgetting that it was actually not organised by the Rolling Stones. I mean, I got there four days before it happened, right? I was the only person from the Rolling Stones who got there, you know, prior, prior to it happening. Their business manager was dealing with all the lawyers and the mafia. Um, it was actually organised by Santana, the Grateful Dead, the Jefferson Airplane, Crosby, Stills and Nash and Young, yeah. who were all San Francisco bands. The San Francisco bands themselves were the people who suggested it in the first place because they wanted to play with the Stones. And of course, afterwards, everybody blamed the Rolling Stones. And I think in, in great, you know, in great measure that that was unfair. Mm. One of the reasons I stayed there, you know, was to try and sort that kind of shit out. But the good karma, if you like, that accumulated from staying there and trying to deal with it all, kind of came to me in the shape of the Grateful Dead. The Grateful Dead, in, in the shape of Garcia, uh, needed help, you know, professional help with their band. And I went, more or less seamlessly, from working for the Rolling Stones to working for the Grateful Dead. So I was a lucky boy in some respects. So the decision to stay there whilst it produces some, produced some lumps and bruises, also, you know, produced some wonderful benefits. Yeah. Like life, man, you know what I mean? It's never exclusively 
shit and it's never exclusively sugar. Yeah. Somewhere in between, you know, is where we end up. And uh, yeah, well, you deal with it the best as you can, you know what I mean? If you do it honestly and with a good heart, people, I think, in the end recognise that, man, you know, for what it what it's worth, you know what I mean? They might say, well, you're an arsehole, but you're a good arsehole. <laughs> or whatever, you know what I mean? You do what you can. Yeah. We're not, none of us are a supermen. Yeah. We're only human beings. Love, love, love.